Okay, so now we're going to start with a simple bar plot of the MIT International Student Data. So first, let's load the, the ggplot library, ggplot2, and load the data frame. So intl is read csv intl.csv. Okay, now the structure of this data frame is very simple. There are two columns, uh, two variables. The first one, the region, and the second one is the percentage of international students who came from that region. So making a bar plot from this data isn't too hard. Uh, we'll start off with a ggplot command, of course, the first argument being the data frame. The aesthetic in this case is to have region on the x-axis and on the y-axis to have the percentage of international students. Now the geometry we're going to use is, as you might guess, bar, uh, geom bar. We have to pass one argument to this geom bar, and it's called stat identity. I'm going to come back and explain what that means. And I also want to label my bars with their value, so it's easy to read uh, in closer detail. So I'm going to use geom text to do that. And the aesthetic of our text is simply to have the the value of a label, the, mess, the text of a label, to be the value of our percentages. So let's look at that. Okay, so yes, we have our bar for each uh, region. Um, the values are between 0 and 1, which looks kind of strange. Uh, the labels are actually lying over the top of the columns, which isn't very nice. And the regions aren't really ordered in any way that's useful. They're actually ordered in alphabetical order, but I think it'd be much more interesting to have them in descending order. So we're going to work on this. Um, first of all, though, what is this stat identity? Well, it's pretty simple. Geometry bar has multiple modes of operation. Um, stat identity says use the value of the y variable as is, which is what we want. The height of the bar is the value of the y variable. Now, there are other modes, including one that counts the number of rows for each value of x and plots that instead. Um, so you can look at the documentation for ggplot to see the different options and how they work. But stat identity is what we want right now. Now, the x-axis is out of order, and the reason for this is that ggplot defaults to alphabetical order for the x-axis. What we need to do is make region an ordered factor instead of an unordered factor. We can do this with the reorder command and the transform command. So let's write this out. So we're going to transform the international data frame. And what we're going to do is say region is going to be a reordering of itself based on decreasing order of percentage of INTL. So if we look at the structure of a data frame now, we see there's something something going on in the region uh, column that wasn't going before, and that's that ordering. So you might have also noticed that I put a negative sign in front of percentage of INTL. So that negative sign means decreasing order. If we had left that out, it would have actually ordered them in increasing order. So unknown or stateless would have been first, and Oceania would have been second, and so on. Okay, so that's uh, one thing fixed. Another thing we didn't like was that the numbers are between 0 and 1, which kind of well, looks, looks a little bit uh, messy. So let's just simply multiply all the values by 100. So percent of INTL equals INTL percent of INTL multiplied by 100. All right? And now the other things we have to fix, like the text overlying and the x-axis being all bunched up like that, uh, we're going to do that in a GG, new ggplot command. So I'm going to break, break it across multiple lines. So we start off with the ggplot command, as we did before, actually identical to what we had before. So the aesthetic is x-axis is the region, and the y-axis is the percentage of international students. Uh, we break it onto multiple lines, so uh, put the plus at the end there, 
and press Shift Enter. We're going to do a bar plot. Uh, the aesthetic, sorry, the stat is identity. Uh, as before, and this time though we're going to manually specify a fill. Uh, I'm going to say dark blue. Quite like how that looks. Now we need the text, and the aesthetic of that is to have the label equal the value of the column. I'm going to add one more thing to this. I'm going to say v just equals negative 0.4. And what this does is it moves the labels up a little bit and off the top of the bars. Uh, you can play with that, so a positive value will move it down and a negative value will move it up. Um, next, I'm going to set the Y label, axis label, to be something a bit more sensible. Um, so percentage, sorry, percent of international students. And finally, I'd like to fix up that x-axis. So I want to get rid of the word region, because it's pretty obvious that these are regions. And I also want to rotate the text uh, on a bit of an angle so you can read it all on a plot like this. So that's some of the theme command. So the theme, theming we're going to do is we're going to say the axis title for the x-axis should be blank. Okay and that the axis text on the x, x axis should be rotated. So it's a text element, its angle is 45. I'm going to move it sideways just a little bit. H just one. And there we go. So we've got our labels V adjusted above the columns. Uh, the bars themselves are dark blue. The numbers are now between 0 and 100 instead of 0 and 1. We can read all the text labels. And uh, it's generally a lot more readable than the pie graph, uh, pie, pie plot, or our original ggplot at that. So let's go back to the slides now and talk about what we've just done.